Hi guys and welcome to another episode. I'm really excited about this episode. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about exposure blending and how I use my finger to create this image. Let's go. So there's one image that I took recently and posted on Instagram that's had more views and more likes than any other Im images that I, I posted. And it's an image that I spent quite a lot of time editing in Lightroom. Um, it was actually a bit of luck really. I'd gone scouting for an autumn scene for, for, for planning for autumn, which is a video I did um, last week. And the image was something that when I got up to the top of the mountain, and I'll show you the, the, the footage in a minute, I, I, I was greeted by this scene of greenery everything was green and the sun was setting there was a little bit of haze and it created this amazing light and I wanted to recreate that feeling in this image but it took a little bit of editing there was a problem with um, lens flare and I didn't have my filters with me because I'd gone really light with my Fuji X-T2 so what I thought would be really useful is to show you how I took the image and then go through the process of importing that into Lightroom and blending the two images that I, I took. One with my finger to reduce the lens flare on the foreground and another one for the sky. So it was two images that I blended together using Lightroom and Photoshop and I'm going to talk you through the process now. Before we go into showing you how I edited those videos, let's have a brief look at the video I did out in the field of how I took the photo. I've come to the top of Parkhouse Hill, which is a series of limestone hills in the Peak District. And just look at my view. It is incredible. So because I traveled light today, I didn't bring my Lee filters um, and I've just got my Fuji X-T2. So it's super light, it allowed me to get up the hill really quickly. But that means I've got a really bright scene here. I really need um, a Lee filter, probably a 0.9 soft edge grad. So what I'm gonna do, maybe even a 0.6 as well on top of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna um, exposure stack. I don't usually do this in Photoshop, but I'm gonna show you how to do it. There's lens flare as well. I've cleaned my lens as best I can to try and get rid of any lens flare, but I've still got some. So I'm gonna put my finger over the sun when I take the exposure for the foreground and then I'm gonna take another exposure for the sky without my finger there, obviously, and hopefully that should work. Okay, I am on a precipice. So, I'm gonna concentrate on my photography, take some shots, and I'll see you back in the studio. Okay, so I've captured the image, so now what I want to do is get it into Lightroom and edit it. But before I do that, I wanted to tell you just how important in the creative process editing your photos is. Probably the most famous landscape photographer in the world, Ansel Adams, said that 50% of his creative process was done in the darkroom. He dodged and burned and created all sorts of patterns to darken the sky and lighten the foreground. And I'm sure that if he'd have been around now, he would have loved Lightroom. You know, I was flicking through this book the other day and it, it's just, it's well worth reading actually. You know, the, the types of diagrams that he was doing and showing where he may have darkened the sky and lightened it, number of seconds he'd give extra, the tools that he created to dodge and burn the sky was just, was just incredible. And it just showed just how important that creative process was when he was back in his studio. Now, he had the idea of the image in his mind um, when he took it and he knew roughly what it was gonna look like, but he used those tools to his advantage when he got back in the darkroom and Lightroom's no different. Okay, let's go and have a look at those images in Lightroom. So here you can see my images now in Lightroom. So if we look at these four images, this one is slightly underexposed for the sky. This one was exposed how I wanted it for the sky. Now you, you probably think that the sky is overexposed in this image, but actually that's the effect that I wanted to portray in the final image. Um, it creates a good sunburst effect as well, as you can see here. But the problem is that if you expose correctly for the foreground in this image, then you can see that there's really bad 
um, flare. Now, I did clean my lens, as I said, quite well, but I've got a big flare here and another big flare here. So, if we look at what happens when I put my finger over the sun, you can see that that removes those flares. So the idea now is to combine these two images so that I don't have any flare and I've got this image here that expo is exposed correctly for the sun. So once I've got these two photos selected, I'm going to right click on them, edit in, and then I'm gonna open as layers in Photoshop. Okay, we've got these two images now in Photoshop. Lightroom just does it all for you and creates these two layers. And you can see that I've got on top here, I've got the one for the sky, but with the bad flares in it. And then below that, I've got the one that's exposed really well for the foreground, but without the flares, but it's got my finger in it to stop the flares and the skies are totally and utterly overexposed. So what I want to do is blend those together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this gradient tool. Now if I just pull this gradient tool over here, you can see that it mimics a graduated filter that you put over the front of your lens and you can change the amount of gra graduation by doing that. But obviously doing that isn't any good. <laughs> so to use that filter, what I've got to do is put a layer mask on. So I go down to the bottom right here, I add layer mask and then I just put this filter where I think I'm gonna want the layer mask, which probably just need to play about with just to get it to look about right. I think that's pretty good. And now I've still got this um, sunburst effect. I've got rid of the lens flare here. Um, the sky's exposed as I wanted it, which is quite bright, um, but there's some detail around the, the edges here, which is exactly what I want. I'm gonna draw the eye into the sun and the, the, the sunset over here through down the mountain. So this is looking really good. And I can now take this back into Lightroom and finish it, the editing. To do that, all you do is just close the image and you click save. So Adobe's great at putting that image straight back into Lightroom. And you can see here that it's now a TIFF image in Lightroom and it's a combination of these two images here. So what I want to do now is go through my workflow for how I would edit this merged image. So Lightroom's great, you start from the top and, and work your way down. When, 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 when I was there on the day, the overriding sort of image and visualization of this final image was one of a very green scene. Um, so I'm gonna go down to about minus 23. Okay, I'm now going to increase the contrast. So I wanna increase the contrast probably quite significantly. Maybe come back and tweak this later. I'm not gonna change the highlights yet. I'm gonna increase the shadows a little bit, increase the whites a tiny bit. And then I'm gonna significantly increase the clarity on this image because that's the look that I want to go for. So I'm gonna go for around about 25. Now when you increase the clarity, then it's, it's almost like um, local sharpening uh, around the edges. And, and what you find is that you lose some saturation. So I'm gonna just slightly increase the vibrance here to add a little bit of punch into the colors again. And then next I'm gonna go into the tone curve and I'm just gonna add an S curve here. So I'll put a point there, slightly increase that and decrease that and I might come back to this later. So you can see now if I go before and after the image is starting to look really punchy. So I'm gonna continue going down now and now this is where I'm gonna just start to alter the colors slightly. The oranges and greens and yellows are gonna slightly change. So it's a good idea just to mess about with this and just see the impact it has. Now obviously I don't want it to be totally green like that and I don't want it to be sort of purpley like that. So I just might, might want to just tweak this slightly. Um, in terms of the hue, I'm gonna go into the green here. And again, I'm just gonna slightly tweak this. I don't want it to look unnaturally green. So I think I'm just gonna drop this down a little bit to have more of a, a sort of a straw colored green, if that's the color. I'm gonna slightly increase the saturation and slightly increase the luminance of that color as well. So apart from the top of the image, which is again a little bit too bright at the moment, this is starting to look quite good. Just get the sharp, increase the sharpening on the image. I'm just gonna zoom in here just to see what that looks like. So yeah, it looks great. You can pick out all the sheep in the fields, which 
When I print this, this is something that you'll see really well in the print. Um, images printed just show all the detail and they just look absolutely amazing. And this is one such image that will look great printed. So the next thing to do is to do some more local um, adjustments. So I'm going to add a graduated filter on the sky and just reduce it. Um, so even though that's now very overexposed from some of the changes that I've made, then the detail is still kept in Lightroom. So I'm going to add a graduated filter here at a slight angle. And I am going to reduce the exposure of the sky slightly and reduce the highlights of the sky slightly. And I'm probably just going to change the temperature of the sky because I want to just change those blues in the top left hand corner. So that is fine. So the final thing I'll do is remove the chromatic aberration so you don't get any funny lines around the edges. And I'm also going to add a tiny amount, just darken the edges slightly here. So there we go. That's the final image. I'm really pleased with it. I, it just really portrayed the feeling and the image that I had in mind when I was there on Parkhouse Hill photographing Chrome Hill a few weeks ago. So thanks a lot for watching. Before I finish the video today, I want to tell you a little bit about a preset that I've created um, in Lightroom for this image. I want to give it away for free. So all you need to do is click in the link in my description to sign up for my newsletter, which I'll be sending out probably once or twice a month top tips and information about my channel and how you can improve your photography. So the preset's called Golden Green Fields and anybody that signs up for my newsletter, then I'll send them out this free preset. I've also spent this week updating my website, so go and take a look at it. Again, the link's in the description. This autumn, I'm gonna be doing one-to-one -one workshops as well. So for details of those, if you sign up for my newsletter, then I'll send, I'll send that out. Again, thanks ever so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and if you're not already on the notification list, then please click the bell icon and you'll get emails when I upload new videos. Until next week, see you later.